now, as you can see, we've got a Cybe Cibi automation uh, machine, as you've probably seen in the other videos. If you've seen the pictures and videos from before, you'll notice that this box is facing directly at me right now uh, in the other pictures and videos. That was impractical. It was actually not a very good design. When you're sitting here trying to operate the machine and you want to see what time is left on the machine before stuff comes out. So we had a piece of this that we grabbed and then some brackets we already had and mounted it at a 90 degree angle from what it was before to give us a better operator control on it. So you can just go, oh, how much time is left before it's going to come out? Well, all right, what are the settings that I need to adjust? Blah, blah, blah. Instead of having to come over here and look at it. So if Simon from Cybe Automation is watching this, this is better. Please do this. Also, you can get to that emergency stop in case you have your, your um, hair stuck in the machine or, or you did something else stupid. All right. Oh, I know. Another, another modification because the high-end machines, let's not kid ourselves here. This isn't a high-end machine. We're not, I'm not, I know that. And if you're a professional, you know this too. Um, but it meets a price point that's uh, great for someone starting out. Uh, down here is a valve for the vacuum. I added in. This wasn't in there. So this allows you to adjust how much air it's going to be able to you know, bring out or suck uh, into the tank. So normally it would just, if you wouldn't have this valve, it would be clean and just wide open. But I usually restrict it just a little bit so that I still have, um, I can have a long uh, vacuum time and not lose everything out of the tank. And not, not because I'm worried about it um, coming back for the next body that I'm going to run on it and not having time to, you know, get the pressure back up in the tank again. But because um, over the duration of the pull, I want it to still have some stuff in the tank left and not be using the vacuum pump to do all the work for those last few seconds of the pull. So, and uh, it seems to work pretty well, actually. Um, it, it gives you a, a nice long pull. You can see the plastic go down over and everything kind of slower and everything, which I think is better in some ways, uh, depending on the mold you're running and the, how, how it how it's designed and everything, but and you get a nice slow pull, it conforms a little bit better and doesn't uh, bunch up sometimes uh, in the corner so bad that they'll still get webbing, but um, there's other ways to fix that or and uh, necessarily this won't necessarily uh, help that out in all situations. But it's just another option you have. High-end machines have stuff like this for adjusted. If you go watch um, the video, the one of the, our first videos on our channel, where we're at another location pulling a Ford F-150, I think, body on their machine, you'll see um, going into their platform, they've got valves on there right there to adjust it and everything, how much air is coming uh, out of there. And I think another valve, I think there was two on there, and I think the other one is for the eject of the body off the mold and everything, that, that poof of air that helps force the body off the mold. So if you watch closely, you'll see that. They've got basically this equivalent of thing right on the hoses. So if you're getting one of these machines, it's a good thing to add to it. I added this piece of pipe and then this valve to it and then attached. This was over here and attached this onto the valve. So there you go. All sorts of tricks. Now you know. <clears throat> okay, I'll show my mug here. I was just getting ready to head out the door, but I thought I should add something onto that last little segment. Um, if you have questions on anything you've seen, you know, or questions about thermoforming, vacuum forming, you know, Leave me a comment. I'm more than happy to answer it. If you look and search for YouTube for a lot of different stuff on thermal frame vacuum forming, what you see is a lot of amateur stuff out there that generally is a bunch of people just throwing darts on the wall trying to figure out stuff. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but they're using a shop vac. They're using a shop vac and, you know, they don't necessarily have an idea what they're, what they're doing and, in, in, you know, sort of thing. I'm running a more professional machine, not that it's the high-end stuff that's out there. Those are generally, I looked at them, they're generally two to three times as much as I paid for this. And getting into this, I was not willing to invest that kind of money, and I didn't want to use the machine, which there's a lot of them out there, because a lot of them were three-phase power, and I needed single-phase uh, power. And that was my only option where I'm at. I still had to spend lots of money to get everything rewired, 
but that's what I went with. And it's much better than shop vac or blister pack machines if you're looking at, don't do that. So anyway, like I was saying, there's a distinct lack of information out there. And I, I figure that's probably because people who are really in the industry don't care to share because it's a competitive advantage if they don't share the information. And if you go to a lot of forums, you won't often see people in the industry commenting. And either because they just, in their free time, they don't want to share the information because they have better things to do with their life. Um, or they know that if they share that information, a competitor could use it against them to drive them out of business. And industry in the United States, as you know, is not exactly thriving all the time. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try and answer it. Have a good day.